Hey guys, it's Andrea. Welcome back to the channel. So guys, let's dive into it. And this one's a broader disability topic one. So, and it's a bit of a story time one as well. So it's related back to a Quora post where someone was asking me about self-diagnosis and why I am so against self-diagnosis. Um, and I copped a lot of flack from that and yes I see the value in self-diagnosis but I personally <clears throat> in my life have experienced a lot of harm through doctors themselves misdiagnosing me with what I had. It's only now and I'm approaching my 40s, I won't mention my age now and it's only now that we have a proper handle on the breadth of my disabilities and so if you're self-diagnosing what are you missing and if you actually start treating for something you can actually cause yourself more harm I realize that there is gaps to accessing a diagnosis there's also dangers in accessing a formal diagnosis but this is where I'm so against self-diagnosis. I understand people want to stay away from labels, but those labels are quite helpful and quite useful in gaining support, in gaining accommodations for work, school, study or business, or even for accessing potential disability support, day services, type of thing. So generally for any disability service your disability has to be diagnosed, treatable and stable. Yes there are particularly under NDIS some what they call episodic disabilities where the function might vary from day to day, you have a good day and a bad day. But this is why I'm so against self-diagnosis is because simply you could actually diagnose yourself with the wrong thing. There's actually a syndrome called medical student syndrome. When, when they're studying these syndromes they start to diagnose the people in their life but they actually don't have the communication skills yet or the filtration skills to be able to rule it out or to rule it in. And so if a lay person does not have those skills, how will we able to distinguish the information, especially when there is a plethora of people saying that this is what it is, this is what it is, this is what it is. And they might have not done their due diligence, might not have done their research. Anyone, including myself, can start a blog. Um, anyone can pretend to be an expert and that's why I always say and I have the disclaimer of doing your own homework N disability affects people in different ways and this isn't actually policing disability because if someone says they have a disability I will accept that but what I won't accept is the bad behaviour that that person believes that that disability entitles them to. I do not like entitled behaviour, I never have actually. Um, this is where things get tricky because people believe that they're entitled to because they have a disability. They about me right but the way they go about gaining that might put a lot of people offside. Um, I'm not advocating for people pleasing at all but we need to be aware of when people start self-diagnosing and using that as an excuse essentially for bad behaviour that then gives people with that genuine condition who have fought to get diagnosed, who have fought to get accommodations it gives them a bad name. It tells them all with the same brush and so this is where I'd say that look into if you do genuinely believe that you have that disability 
genuinely look into getting a diagnosis so whether that be through um, you might be saying hang on but I can't afford it ask your GP about payment plans is there any advocacy agencies that will help you to pay for it is there any free clinics that will help you um, especially in the NDIS there's places like MS Queensland for neurological conditions there's places like Epilepsy Queensland, places like Arthritis Australia, um, places like the Summer Foundation. Guys, and uh, not sponsored by the way, so anyone can ring up and say, hey, this is what I think I have, I don't have a diagnosis, but, and the worst, guys, the worst they can say is no, and you need to accept that no. And so we need to be aware that there has to be a line drawn somewhere yes we might all have a spectrum yes we all have things where we could use help but that is a free and democratic society and so when you start policing this disability it leads to the sleep slippery slope oh okay where is the line so if one person gets accommodations that they need but other people don't need them people might get jealous yes but there are some teachers and professors out there who are going okay well if one person gets them they all get them the accommodation so recorded videos um, able to um, have a scribe take notes extra time on tests or quizzes um, being able to just put a hand up instead of calling out if you take attendance for lectures or things like that. Um, these, and I'm actually a big advocate for equality of opportunity, not equality of outcome, because you actually learn more from failure than you do from success. You learn things about yourself, you learn things about others, you learn from those hard mistakes essentially guys so we need to be aware of that and I'm not trying to police disability or things like that but encouraging people to get a diagnosis so therefore you can get the help you need um, also that having a disability is not easy um, it's not easy it's not cute it's not trendy there are day-to-day -day struggles with relationships chronic pain for me for fighting for the basic care you need fighting because you know you can't work to start a business or to receive government support and then having people respect your boundaries of a budget or having a care worker respecting your budget as well even for me with the previous videos consistency of care and so guys that's where there has to be a line drawn in the sand saying that these people have a disability, they deserve care, these people are able-bodied. And I know that line isn't so simple, and this is where you generally, to access any care scheme worldwide, do need a proper formal diagnosis from a doctor, a specialist, someone who specialises in that conditional disability. Um, there are disabilities that, as I said, do vary or, as time goes on, do get worse. And we need to be aware of this and be a lot more compassionate. But at the same time, we do need to speak up for those who are essentially faking for compassion or even views. And this is not an easy task because they might have... A disability, mental illness or chronic health condition. Yes, we need to believe the people, but those with the chronic health condition that they have, by engaging with that person and starting to ask questions, you can start to see whether they are faking or not. I know I'm not suggesting trolling, but just having a conversation saying, oh, well, how do you cope with X, Y, Z symptoms or that might be a major symptom of that condition as well and asking them how they have care, what 
things like that. They might not be comfortable sharing on camera, but there are unfortunately people who do fake mental illnesses or disabilities for views, and it makes my job and everyone else's job so much harder to be believed, and even believed in real life. Um, so guys, that's why I am so against self-diagnosis, because quite simply, it doesn't just harm the person who believes that they have that disability, it harms the wider disability community at large that's fought for recognition, diagnosis and acceptance and for the care that they so rightly deserve and need. So guys, um, please like, share and subscribe and guys, I will see you guys in the next video.